So last week, I made a video on Lake Isikul, which is a saline lake located high in the Tian Shan Mountains. And as I was researching that lake, a thought came into my mind. If Isikul has a salinity of 0.6%, which naturally occurring body of water is the saltiest on Earth? My initial thought was, of course, the Dead Sea, which has a salinity level of 34%, making it about nine times saltier than the ocean. But surprisingly, the Dead Sea is not the saltiest body of water on Earth. You see, there's a small, relatively unknown body of water that's way saltier than the Dead Sea. It has a salinity level of 43%, easily making it the saltiest body of water on Earth. And as always, this is Ali, and welcome back to Urban Atlas. But before I reveal what this body of water is, it's important to know where it's located. So welcome to the Danakil Depression. This is a masterpiece of extremes. Massive salt flats stretch here across the horizon. Some of the largest salt deposits on Earth, mined by local Afar people using methods unchanged for centuries. This is a place unlike any other on Earth and it provides the perfect setting and context for the most saline body of water on Earth. You see, dynamic geology and active volcanism has painted this landscape in impossible colors. Sulfur springs bubble bright yellow and orange, and iron oxide stains the ground blood red. The smell of sulfur hangs in the air like a warning. Nearby, the Dalal hydrothermal field creates formations that look more like alien coral reefs than anything terrestrial. These formations you see, they're like living, growing structures created by superheated mineral-rich water pushing up from deep underground. All of this means that this location is the perfect spot for some extreme geography. And extreme it is. You see, the Danakil Depression is located near the triple junction of the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden, and the Ethiopian Rift, formed by the drifting away of three tectonic plates, the Arabian, the Nubian, and the Somalian. The floor of this rift is located approximately 120 meters below sea level. Nearby, we can find Erta Ali, which is a continuously active shield volcano known for its persistent lava lakes. Among all these natural wonders, one small pond has captured the attention of scientists worldwide. This is the Gaetale Pond, and officially the saltiest naturally occurring body of water on Earth. On the surface, it just looks like a small pool of discolored water in this strange landscape. It's quite small in size, only about 70 meters in diameter. The pond ranges in temperature between 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. Not exactly a nice place for a swim. But what sets this pond apart is what I mentioned previously. Because of the volcanic and geological activity taking place in the area, the pond has a high salinity content, mainly calcium chloride and magnesium chloride. The salinity is approximately 43%. Now to put that into perspective, the Gaatale pond is 12 times saltier than the world's oceans, which have a salinity of approximately 3 to 5% and the world's most famous salty body of water, the Dead Sea, well, that had a salinity of 34%. During my research, I came across one lake located in Russia that may be able to challenge that Gaatale pond in terms of its salinity. This is Lake Elton, a hypersaline lake located in the Volgograd Oblast of Russia, near the border with Kazakhstan. It's kind of hard to pin down the exact salinity of this lake, I'm seeing levels ranging from 20% all the way up to 50%. This lake by itself is extremely impressive and it probably deserves its own video. And because it's quite difficult to pin down the exact salinity of this lake, I'm going to consider the Gaetale Pond as the most saline body of water on Earth. Some locals call this small pond Killer Lake because of the toxic gases emitted through the surface of the water. And because of this, locals often find dead insects and birds near its shores. Experts think that what probably killed many of these animals on its shores is not the water, but the strong emissions of carbon dioxide. 
You see, carbon dioxide is actually heavier than air, and because of that, it sinks to the ground. So when small creatures come to the edge of this lake, they breathe in that carbon dioxide and end up suffocating. And researchers consider it a dangerous and potentially lethal health hazard for human visitors. Despite these harsh conditions, life does find a way. Scientists have discovered unique communities of extremophile bacteria thriving in the Gaetale pond. Organisms that don't just tolerate these conditions, they actually require them. Now, you'd be surprised to know that no one exactly knows how old Gaetale pond is. But according to Landsight satellite imagery taken on the 6th of February 2003, it existed in roughly the same semicircular shape. Now, whether or not it was filled with this extremely salty water at that time, we're not quite sure. Locals think that it was a 2005 earthquake that actually opened up and reactivated the volcanic spring that today feeds it with extremely salty water. It's important to understand that while the underground volcanic springs help maintain the pond's salinity, the fact that the pond has no known inlets also contributes to its high salinity. Evaporation is also high in the area due to the high temperatures, further enhancing the 43% salinity. And in addition to the high salinity, the water is also acidic. It has a pH of 3.5 to 4, meaning prolonged exposure to this water could potentially cause mild burns. Interestingly, researchers describe the water as feeling greasy or soapy. But this is not due to oil at all. This is actually due to the supersaturation of dissolved salts in the water. Unfortunately, in Ethiopia, the volcanic regions of Erta'ale, Dalal, and the Gaatale Pond are not yet part of a national park. So it's actually quite difficult to enforce any kind of regulations or rules in terms of tourism to these potentially dangerous places. And because of this, many of the visitors to the Gaatale Pond are unaware of its potentially dangerous emissions. In addition, this is an incredibly remote region and it's quite difficult to reach. Not to mention the fact that this area is politically volatile. And many of the researchers have to be accompanied by the military for their own protection. This pond and the surrounding area could be safely visited if precautions are taken and the people are prevented from climbing down to the water's edge, where the highest potential risks of carbon dioxide poisoning are present. But you may be asking, why does this small pond in one of Earth's most inhospitable places even matter? Well, it matters because it might be showing us what life was like billions of years ago, when the Earth was young and violent. The conditions found here near the Gaatale pond, extreme heat, high salinity, and volcanic activity, may mirror what scientists believe early Earth was like. And if life can survive here, may suggest that life might have emerged in similar extreme conditions billions of years ago. And thus, each sample from Gaatale Pond may help answer one of humanity's biggest questions. How did life begin and what are the true limits of life itself? And thus, in one of the hottest, most extreme places on Earth, this tiny pond could help rewrite the rules of life itself. And as always, if you like content like this, remember to give this video a like Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And as I mentioned in previous videos, I now have a YouTube store where you can go and purchase digital maps. They're quite affordable and I'm adding more to my inventory almost every day. It's a great way to support my channel and to support my content. So if you are interested, I would recommend taking a look at the inventory and perhaps you may find a map you like. And as always, let me know in the comments below what kind of topics you'd like me to cover in future videos. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.